Well, I think uh, we can start now. It's 1230. And I wanted to uh, welcome everyone to, uh, expo uh, to Secrets of the Egypt and the Nile today. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm really excited about this itinerary because number one, I love river, river cruising. And this is brand new. Um, something that for people who have done river cruising many times or people who, even if it's a first time, Egypt is one of the locations that um, a lot of people want to go to and want to see. So today I have a few guests with me that are gonna help, but um, before we get to that, I wanted to go over just a few things. I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Lori Foster and I'm a travel advisor and the owner of Luxury Travel Associates Dream Vacations. I've been in the travel industry for 25 years and I've been around the world many times and I think I'm just about over 60 countries. So I love traveling. Um, and again, I'm super excited about this new uh, itinerary in Egypt. So, um, like I said before, we're really going to talk about the river cruise, about Egypt. It's 11 nights. Uh, it's filling up like crazy. I actually had a group space on the, the one previous to this the week before, which is again, October 2022. And that ship is already sold out. So it, it's, it's amazing to see how popular this itinerary is. And I think they've even extended the season because of uh, just the sheer number of people who want to uh, try this new itinerary. So since I have not been to Egypt, one of the places I have not been, um, I have the experts here who are going to go over it with us and the details, but they, we have pre and post options that are in um, before the cruise and after the cruise. And I've been to all those destinations. Definitely one of the things that you never, that you don't wanna miss. So even though it is an option, I kind of say it's a must. Um, and I'm just quickly gonna go over and just show a few pictures. Uh, let's see, hold on, there we go. Nope, my slideshow isn't working. Okay, uh, Dubai is one of the options. This just a quick picture of my son marveling at the beauty and just the sheer immense size of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, um, me in front of the sign, I love Dubai, which I do. Abu Dhabi is another option um, with that, the Dubai package. Uh, Emirates Palace right there, one of the most luxurious hotels in the world. I think it cost uh, $3 billion to build, something crazy like that. Um, and then the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque, also in Abu Dhabi, which is one of the largest in the world. I think it's the third largest in the world. 41,000 people can worship there at once. The, just the size is amazing. There is also a desert safari that can be done with this, uh, with the Dubai extension. Again, just the camel rides, the belly dancing, the dinners, the dunes, uh, an unforgettable experience. Jordan seems to be the most popular extension. Um, this is the treasury in Petra, one of those bucket list moments that um, people think about and when they picture Jordan, there is a lot more to Jordan than just this, but I was just there in November and absolutely fell in love with it. Israel, another top destination, uh, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, um, uh, the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem and Masada, the fortress um, over in the West Bank. So let's get back to Egypt. And um, I have two guests that I would like to introduce. I have with me Richard Bravo from Ama Waterways and Todd and I from Ama Waterways. And they're both uh, a wealth of knowledge in anything that has to do with river cruising and specifically this Egypt itinerary. So welcome Richard and Todd, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. So um, I'll just, I'll be very brief today because um, truly the, the expert on Egypt specifically is my colleague, uh, Todd Ney. He's a product manager of our Egypt product. Uh, again, which Lori was sharing is our new product that just launched for next year and it is the most popular request itinerary right now. Um, and Todd also oversees another product that we offer, um, which is our Africa Chobi River product as well too. But I just want to share, you know, the reason we've been doing some of these presentations, uh, we, we recognize a lot of people are online and some of it can be a little bit uh, of a burnout, but our aim is to keep these engaging, to keep them and, uh, you know, keep you inspired. You know, we can't travel right now. We're fully aware of that, but things will open up one day. And when that happens, we want you to have some wonderful things on your list that you can start checking off. 
Um, so instead of uh, just uh, kind of belaboring this, Todd, I want to just hand it right back to you and have you walk us through this um, amazing itinerary and all the different optionals along the way, please. Oh, thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Laurie. Again, my name is Todd Ney, and I'm a product manager here at Amo Autoways, and I'm talking to you from, well, local here in Los Angeles. So let's start with our first, uh, the map of location of Egypt up in the and north. Todd, center. can I just interrupt you one moment before you start? Uh, questions, uh, and you can put right in the chat feature um, on your toolbar, and I'll try to um, go through them, and we can either answer them as we go along, I'll let you know, Todd, or at the end for anything that we miss. Absolutely. All right, good to go. All right, so here's a location of Egypt, northeastern corner of the African continent, and um, I'm pointing out Israel, Jordan, and as Laurie spoke about, the UAE or Dubai. Uh, these are locations, and these are um, extensions that you can do before and after the program to Egypt. All right, our Secrets of the Nile program is 12 nights, it's, uh, or 12 days. 11 nights. Uh, it starts with three nights in Cairo, seven nights on the Nile, and then one night in Cairo at the end. Lori has, does, they do have a special departure uh, scheduled for October 14th to 25th. That's the day you would arrive in Cairo and the day you would depart Cairo in 2022. So it's still a couple of years away, almost two years away. Um, and like Lori said, uh, the sailings are really getting full. So if, you're, if this interests you, um, this might be a time when you want to travel. All right, let's talk about Cairo itself. Uh, uh, like I said, three nights in Cairo at the beginning. Uh, Cairo is a massive city, 22, 23 million people. The Nile runs through the heart of Cairo. Uh, the Nile itself, about 4,300 miles long. Uh, they say it's the longest river in the world. Uh, it's almost they say the Amazon is also the longest river in the world, but either way, 4,300 miles long. Uh, the Nile begins up in Uganda and Lake Victoria uh, starts as the blue and white Nile, flows into one, and then we have the Nile through the uh, heart of Cairo, then empties into the Mediterranean Sea. Um, Cairo, Arabic word meaning the conqueror, and uh, it's just a few things about Egypt itself. It came, uh, Egypt was uh, founded back in uh, uh, about 3,500 BC. Weekends in Egypt are Fridays and Saturdays as opposed to our Saturdays and Sundays. And um, the other thing I was gonna tell you was I lost my train of thought because someone just walked by me, but uh, that's okay. Oh, the Egyptians, they came up with the 365 day a year calendar. All right, our ship, it's gonna be a new ship and well, technically new, because actually on the Nile River, you cannot bring uh, any new ships. They don't allow any more ships on the Nile. So what we did, we purchased a ship, been in the shipyard for about, and we took it out of service, put it in the shipyard in Cairo. Uh, it's been in the shipyard for the last year and it'll come out in a couple of months. The ship is called the Amadalia and we stripped it to its core, down to its like its hull and we've rebuilt it up to the top. Amadalia, Dahlia is a plant that grows native to Egypt. Our ship is uh, 34 cabins, 16 suites, 18 standard cabins. Uh, let's just look at the layout and I can explain it to you on the next slide. Um, you can see uh, five decks. The decks are named after plants that are native or grown in Egypt, uh, acacia, lotus, lily, jasmine, and then of course the sun deck. Um, and then the lowest category of our rooms are the category uh, D and E, 196 square feet. And those are on the acacia deck and they come with a picture window. Work your way up from that. The purple section is a category C with a French balcony. And then the rest, green, turquoise, blue, pink, those are all suites come with a balcony. A couple of them just come with a French balcony, but most of them are with a full balcony. And the main uh, restaurants on that deck. And then let's just go to the Jasmine deck a bit. Um, you can see what we have is a chef's table. If any of you have been on an Alma trip before, uh, we do have chef's table, which is like a private restaurant on each of our ships, and we'll no doubt do it here in Egypt too. And each night, 13 to 15 guests will be invited to the chef's table where the chef will do a, an amazing presentation, talk about the food he's serving. Um, it's a very intimate presentation and gourmet food, and every, all guests will get the opportunity to visit the chef's table at least once during the trip. You can also see we have a fitness room, massage room, hair and nail salon, um, of course, the pool on the top. We'll also have a, uh, uh, 
a wellness coach aboard. So if those are interested in like Pilates or yoga in the morning and stuff like that, the wellness coach will be on board. Number of crew, about 62. Number of guests, 64. So it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, uh, here's a photo of the, the top deck. And the top deck here uh, comes with a pool, showers, and you can see the canopies over there on the left-hand side. I should say that Egypt is an incredibly dry destination, it's particularly down on the Nile, uh, uh, while in Luxor and Aswan. And to give you an example of how dry it is, uh, and how often the sun shines is, I asked Dina, one of our Egyptologists when I was over there last, because it just seemed really dry. And I said to Dina, when was the last time you saw rain here in Luxor? And she looked at me, kind of like with a stupid look on my her face. And she goes, I have no idea. It might have rained 17 or 19 years ago. So that's tells you how dry this part of the world is. It may rain a little more up in Cairo during the winter months of say December and January, but for the most part, it's pretty dry, mostly like coastal California. And um, don't forget your sunblock. So this is the top deck. All right, here's a picture of uh, one of our atriums or the lobby area of uh, the Amadaya. It does have the, uh, you know, the local character. The lounge, this is the lounge. Um, and like we do in Europe, in Egypt, we'll also have our sip and sail. Sip and sail is like a happy hour before dinner. And we, we have complimentary local wine, local beer, maybe a drink of the day. It's sort of something every day before dinner for um, one hour. We'll also have entertainment in the lounge after dinner. And we'll do simple things like uh, uh, like a belly dance show, maybe a galabaya party where guests dress up like the locos. It'd be kind of fun. We'll do a folklore shore where you get local music and stuff like that. And we may be a captain's welcome reception cocktail and stuff like that. So lots always going on in the lounge. The restaurant, uh, this is a picture of our restaurant and uh, just uh, it'll be managed by a, a couple of uh, managers from our Europe uh, side. So the food will be continental, which is European or North American, but we'll also, you know, in, bring in uh, sort of like uh, Egyptian cuisine, which is kind of a mix of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean. Most of our food will be uh, flown in from Europe just for hygiene reasons. And uh, we'll always be able to um, cater to different needs such as uh, vegan, vegetarian, dairy, gluten-free, no problems. We just need to know uh, that in advance. Uh, just to give you an idea what the meals are like. And um, I also wanna tell you during lunch and dinner, local beer and local wine is complimentary. And local beer there in Egypt is Stella, local wine. Um, it's a mix. They are vineyards in, great, in Egypt but not enough to support the wine industry. So a lot of grapes are imported from uh, South Africa. They mix it all up. And there you have your local wine in Egypt. And uh, so complimentary wine and beer during dinner. Um, and actually the local wine is pretty good. Okay, let's look at the rooms on the Amadalia. Um, first off, we'll look at the suites, since 16 of them, they range in size from 370 to 410 square feet. Bedding, two beds or one. You just need to let us know at the time of booking. Um, it comes with a seating lounge. You can see it on the top right-hand side. And then uh, an aerial view down to the right-hand side. Um, suites, like I said, does have a sitting room. And I want to mention that on all our rooms, whether in standard or in the suites, Wi-Fi is always complimentary. And there's always um, on-demand uh, television and, of course, air conditioning in Egypt. Um, all the suites uh, will come with a full tub and a walk-in walk shower. Um, also in the suites, which I didn't know was really important, but it is two sinks, two double sinks and all the suites. And again, 16 suites on board the Amadalia. Uh, this is a picture of our middle category. This is category uh, C. They come with a French balcony. Again, two beds or one and uh, 226 square feet. And then these are the standard rooms on the lowest deck, which come with a picture window, 196 square feet. And you can see the bedding. And one thing this photo doesn't show, but it is there. There's storage. You do have a closet, but you'll also have storage underneath the bed. All right, let's talk about uh, the land program itself. That was the ship, the Amadaya. All right, so you're going to fly from North America. You'll get into Cairo, most flights via Europe. Some, there are some non stops from the East Coast. But no matter what, in, the odds are you're gonna arrive late in the afternoon or early evening. 
we will meet you on arrival before immigration and everybody gets a transfer. Do you need a visa for Egypt? The answer is yes. The cost is $25 currently. And to get a visa, you just go online, I would say three to four weeks prior to departure and I'll fill out the application, give me your credit card number and they'll send you a confirmation. You present it at immigration on arrival. You can get a visa on arrival, but I discourage that because it does take the process much longer to get through. So we'll meet you at the airport, assist you through immigration, get your bag, and then you'll be transferred to the hotel. You, the transfers are on arrival. So uh, if you, there's no waiting, um, you know, for 11 o'clock or two o'clock or eight o'clock transfer, you get transferred on arrival. The other question I do get asked is, do you need any mandatory medications and stuff? Uh, when you're for Egypt itself, the answer is no, there's no malaria in this part of the world. Um, I would always just say be up to date on your uh, vaccinations. The hotel we're using in Cairo, you can see it here, is the Four Seasons at First Residence. This is the top hotel in Cairo. And if you remember that first slide I showed you, it was that picture of Egypt, and I kind of said it was, or Cairo was kind of chaotic and stuff. This hotel that we've chosen is about a mile south of the center of Cairo. And we did that particularly for one reason is because it gives a sort of a peace and tranquility in this part of the uh, Cairo. You can see on the green there, that's the uh, botanical gardens uh, across the street from the hotel. Um, hotel itself does have uh, 200 rooms, overlooks the Nile. And actually let's look at the rooms themselves. Uh, these are the superior rooms that you'll be staying in. All our rooms do have a partial Nile view. Uh, rooms have complimentary Wi-Fi. And um, for those that know their music system, they come equipped with a uh, Bose music system. So that's pretty cool. Most of the rooms are, will be up on the up, you know, the upper half of the, uh, the hotel. If you go on TripAdvisor right now, uh, you'll find that this particular hotel is the number one hotel in Cairo. Uh, rooms are big too, uh, but almost up over 500 square feet. All right, here's a picture of looking at the swimming pool of the hotel. A uh, hotel also comes with uh, six different restaurants and each restaurant features a cuisine from, uh, from around the world. There's a spa in the, on, in the hotel, whether you use it or not, there's a fitness center. Um, and what I should mention is in Cairo, our trip includes, always includes breakfast while you're in Cairo, always includes lunch, but we don't include dinner. And the simple fact is, because here at this particular hotel, there are so many choices to eat. We feel like if we're out all day sightseeing, uh, you know, it'll be a nice time for the guests to um, unwind. So on day one, we'll meet you at the airport. We'll take you to the hotel. Um, nothing planned for the first evening because you're all, most of you arriving late in the day. Um, get to your room, maybe have a light bite to eat. And then the next morning, um, we're gonna head over to the Egyptian Museum um, as a group. And the Egyptian Museum, uh, it was built back in, I guess, 1902. And it does house the uh, uh, King Tut. This is a mask of King Tut. They found this back in 1925. King Tut, he actually ruled Egypt uh, 1332 to 1322 BC. King Tut started ruling Egypt uh, at the age of nine. He died at the age of 19. And uh, how did he die? There's a lot of controversy of how he was uh, killed, but they now pretty much think that it was probably in a chariot race. And um, so we'll tour the museum. We'll give a tour, partial tour of the museum. You have time on your own and so on. Um, but I should also mention there's a new museum being built in Cairo. It's called the Grand Museum. And uh, it was supposed to be completed last year and it wasn't done. It was delayed again this year, not done. They're pretty much certain that it will be completed in 19 or in 2021. And if it is, we'll be going to the Grand Museum. It's a much bigger museum. And also there's 30,000 antiquities or artifacts that are in stores the public has never seen. And these 30,000 um, antiquities will be brought into the new museum. So there's a lot more to see. And of course the King Tut treasures will also be moved to the new museum. So if the new museum is open, we'll be going to that instead of the old museum, which will be shut down. Another great place we're gonna to head to in Cairo is down by the souk and the, what they call the Kalalili, uh, Kana Al Kahili market. And this is a marketplace that's, uh, this is where the artists and craftsmen, uh, this is where they do their business and live. Uh, this area has been, part of Cairo since the 10th century. And um, 
what also this is, we're going to do a walking tour of this market area, but we're also going to do what visit a coffee house and restaurant. And why are we doing a coffee house? If you think, uh, you don't know, but in the 1700s, the first coffee house was opened in Cairo. And uh, Egypt, this part of the world is known for their coffee. So we'll visit a coffee house slash restaurant and have a beautiful lunch. Um, one of the top the food's always rated like the top in Cairo and stuff like that. But you think about it, a coffee house in Cairo opening up in 1760 and, you know, Starbucks or coffee bean, you know, they were only really came around in the 19, uh, 1990s, I guess, maybe in Seattle a little earlier and stuff like that. So the Egyptians were way ahead of their game. Um, and we'll visit, so we'll visit this historical area and um, we'll head back to the hotel. That night, we'll actually have a little welcome reception, get everyone together, have a cocktail, maybe an appetizer, but then your evening's free. Next day, we'll head over to the pyramids and a little bit about the pyramids. These were the tallest structures in the world and up until the 14th century. Uh, each pyramid consists of two to two and a half million bricks. The bricks are, are stone. The stones are made of granite and limestone. And uh, of course, the pyramids are tombs built around 2500 BC and uh, when they were building them there was a village of a city of 20,000 workers that you know they, 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 that they lived in the city uh, city and the government or I guess like Pharaoh and stuff like that they supplied the housing the food the, you know cleaning and so on like that it was like one big city that surrounded the uh, pyramids how long did it take to build the pyramids uh, it's a guessing game, but anywhere from 10 to 30 years. Like I said, the pyramids are tombs and people are saying, can we go inside these tombs? The answer is sometimes, but in the, for the most part, the answer is no. Um, once in a while, you know, sporadically, they'll open them up. And if, they let, if you want to go in, it's $25, but the odds are you won't be able to go in. I have been inside the pyramids. And even when you do go in, it's kind of like, remember the tomb is in the heart of the pyramid. You've got to crawl in down, hunch down, sometimes move sideways, go down these steps, steep stairs, there's no handrails and stuff like that. Um, so mobility could be an issue, but don't worry about it. We'll visit a tomb later on on the river while we're cruising the Nile. Another last thing is uh, camel rides. Yeah, you can do a camel ride and this is where you would do it at, uh, at the pyramids. Um, we don't include a camel ride. Camels aren't even, a, a, you know, they're not native to Egypt, but we know they're iconic. So if you want to do a camel ride, you could do it here. The owners and the camels, they walk around the pyramids, cost about 15 bucks, and we'll take you around for about 10 minutes and you get some pictures. All right, we'll also visit the Sphinx. The Sphinx built around the same time as the pyramids, um, and that is, uh, the Sphinx is that of a head of a king, body of a, body of a lion, and uh, how long did it take to build the Sphinx? Maybe three years. What makes the Sphinx really remarkable is that it's all carved out of uh, one stone. Lunch that day will be at the Mena House. And the Mena House is, uh, well, it's a, uh, at one time it, it was built in 1816. It was a hunting lodge. Hunters used to come down from Egypt or Egypt from Europe. They would hunt hippos and crocodiles in the Del Nile Delta. And this is where they would stay. Beautiful, stunning architectures. They've managed to save the structure. They've added on to certain parts of uh, that are a hotel now, but it is still a five-star property. So a beautiful gourmet lunch overlooking uh, the pyramids. And um, after lunch, we're going to visit a synagogue and a, uh, a church, and we'll head back to the hotel, and then you'll have a free evening. The next day, we're going to head to the airport and fly one hour south of Cairo to the city of Luxor. And the city of Luxor is a, uh, uh, this is where we're gonna, how can I say it? We're gonna transfer to the airport, fly down to Luxor, the flights down to Luxor, they take uh, about one hour and the planes are 737s, Airbus and stuff like that. We'll land in Luxor, city of about 150,000. Luxor, uh, Arabic word meaning fortress. We'll land at the airport, we'll transfer to our ship. We have our own private dock in Luxor. You'll board the ship, settle into your room around noon, have lunch at the, on the ship, and then we're gonna head over to the Luxor temple. And let me just tell you how the temple tours work in, in Egypt. Temple tours take about one hour to two hours. And on the Ama trip, you remember I said our, our ship holds 68 guests. We're actually going to break our groups up into 20 to 23 guests. So it's small groups, and you have your own Egyptologist 
for the whole trip from Cairo all the way through um, back on the ship and then back to Cairo. The Egyptologists are your guides through the temples. Um, they are university educated. They do need a license. They are the historians. And so when you're doing the walking tours, uh, you'll follow the Egyptologists and you'll also have headphones. So there won't be any issues uh, for hearing. And on top of that, there'll be an AMA cruise director or tour director that oversees the Egyptologists as well as the group. So you still have one particular point, point, point person up at the top. Uh, when you're walking through these temples, good walking shoes, again, bring your sun hat. Is there a dress code? No, you can just shorts, t-shirt, whatever makes you comfortable um, for the temples. So I'll point out a couple of the temples along the way. This is the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. I have a hard time pronouncing it. And Magdi, my friend in Cairo, who I work with, I said, how do you really pronounce Hatshepsut? hot chicken soup, and he said, just say hot chicken soup. So we have queen hot chicken soup. The first female ruler of Egypt, um, more than like 4,000 years ago, and she ruled Egypt for 20 years. And you think about it, when we get a female ruler nowadays in the world, president, prime minister, whatever, it's usually a big deal. But in Egypt, they were doing this 4,000 years ago. And Queen Hot Chicken Soup, she was a strong leader. And if you see statues of her now, today in Egypt, you'll see her often with a beard, broad shoulders, a king's crown type of thing. And she got those sort of male, um, um, they, they looked at her as a male. She had the strength of a male and that's why her statues uh, tend to look more like a male. Her son took over afterwards uh, and after she ruled Egypt for 20 years. All right, this is kind of cool. The tomb of Queen Nefertari. Very, very few people get to go into Queen, and Queen Nefertari. Kind of like that. They started, you know, it's, it was founded a long time ago, but they really left it alone up until the 1980s. Slowly but surely, they tried to open it up. And uh, it's really only now that people can real visit the tomb of Queen Nefertari. But very few people see it. And the reason, well, first let's start, tell me about Queen Nefertari. First wife of King Ramses II. Uh, she was considered his most beautiful wife. She was smart. She was educated. She could write. She married King Ramses at the age of 13. King Ramses, uh, he was 15. She died at the age of 45. And rightful age at 45, uh, dying at, and at this time, he uh, would be like 120 years old. Uh, King Ramses, they say he lived anywhere from 66 to 92 years. I'm not sure, but that would be like the longest man living in the world. But um, the tomb here, why don't many people get to see it? It's because of the cost. The entrance fee to get into this tomb is $125 per person. Um, we include it in our trip. Most cruise companies will not simply because of the cost, but we think it's pretty special. And this is something you're gonna take home with you that you'll be talking about for the uh, rest of your lifetime. So the tomb of Queen Nefertari is included on our trip. And here's another look at it. And what's really cool walking through the tomb um, you'll find little poem poetry written by King Ramses. Remember, he lived longer than her to Queen Nefertari. It's really, uh, you know, up close and personal experience. Uh, Temple of Horus, I wanted to just point this out simply because uh, how it was founded. Founded back around 1860 by a French archaeologist. And the only reason he was founded was he was just digging around. He hit something hard. It turned out to be this temple. But what he was digging around was a massive sand dune. So, uh, this temple up until the 1860s was a massive sand dune and nobody even knew it existed. The Nile itself, um, uh, interesting fact about the Nile, um, the sun, uh, what they do in Egypt, you'll find the temples are on the east side, tombs are on the west side. And why is that? The Egyptians didn't say sunrise or sunset. They actually said the birth of the day when the sun rose and they called it the death of the day when the sun set. And that's why the tombs are on the west side or where the sun sets. Tombs are related to death. And so we have the death of the day. So you'll find the vast majority of tombs on the west side of the Nile. We'll also enjoy a felucca ride along the Nile. Feluccas is how the locals get around on the Nile River. Um, we'll also, this is really cool too. I will visit a Nubian village. And who are the Nubians? Well, they're like the indigenous here in uh, uh, North America, you know, they were the first ones here, similar to the, you know, First Nations in Canada or the uh, first Native Americans here or the Inuit up in, uh, up in the Arctic. They were there first and they probably, the Nubians probably think came from Central Sahara around 8500 BC. 
They settled in southern Egypt and northern uh, uh, Sudan, and they lived along the Nile and on the islands of the Nile, and they live in these very colorful homes. And if you look at this home here, you see a palm tree, reptiles, diamonds, birds, all kinds of different things. You think, well, this is just art, but it's not. This is actually telling the story or the history of the family that lives there. The typical photo of the uh, Nubians. And remember, you know, Egypt was, you know, first settled rack for the, you know, the Egyptians when they came to Egypt. Well, actually, there were Romans and uh, the Greeks and stuff. They settled around 3500 BC. So the Nubians had been here for about 4000 years before, um, you know, settled by the uh, Egyptians from the Mediterranean. Another cool thing that we're going to do here in the Nubian village, yeah, there's Nubian villages along the way, and many companies will visit a Nubian village, and then you go in, you'll say hello, you know, walk around a bit, and then head back to the ship. But we're actually going to take it one step further, where we'll meet the locals at the Nubian village. They'll walk us around their village and tell them everything that's going on. We'll visit the market. We'll take it one step further, and we'll have lunch with the Nubians in their village. Um, so it's you know, you know, when you take a trip anywhere in the world, Lori's going to say this too, one of the biggest things that you come back with is you tell stories about the people you met. And we try to make these people to people encounters. Uh, so you uh, understand, you know, visit the local culture. That's one of the highlights the temples are, the pyramids are and stuff like that. So are the people. All right, uh, another insider tip that we have here is Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel built by King Ramses again for Queen Nefertari and his family. And he built this up on the, on the Nile. And, uh, it, and it was a place of worship and so on up until, you know, for about a thousand years. And then it was basically abandoned. And um, hang on a sec, I'd admit somebody here. All right, so Abu Simbel, it's uh, how I can explain it to you is it's located 200 miles south of Aswan. And the only way to get to Abu Simbel is to fly. The flight takes about 40 minutes. Um, and the number of people that can see Abu Simbel is limited to the number of seats on the plane. And in order to see Abu Simbel, if you really want to see it, um, one thing that we do with Amman Waterways is we'll let you pre-book it. So you're actually guaranteed a seat on that flight down to Abu Simbel. The whole trip about 40 minutes south, you're down there for several hours and you fly back. It's all kind of like an afternoon. And Abu Simbel itself, um, what makes it really spectacular is back um, back in the late 1950s, early 1960s, they built a dam, the high dam or the Aswan Dam uh, near Aswan. And the water that was going to fill up behind it, which is uh, Lake Nassar, was actually going to cover Abu Simbel. And so the government took it, uh, this temple apart brick by brick by brick, moved it up the hill 600 feet and rebuilt it again. And uh, what other remarkable thing is that um, on October 22nd and um, February 22nd of each year, when the sun rises or the birth of the day, the first rays will sell uh, of the sun that <laughs> will um, shine right through um, uh, right through that entrance and come out the other side. So you'll say, why don't we just include this? Well, it is expensive. The optional trip will be about $345, including the flight. And we figure that about 80% of the guests will want to go see this. 20% won't. And those 20% will just have a free afternoon or free morning in um, uh, Aswan. So if you want to see uh, Abu Simbel, uh, you can pre-book it and you're guaranteed a seat. Whereas other people on the Nile River on different cruise companies, they sell it as an optional, but it's first come first serve, but you'll be already guaranteed a seat so you won't avoid um, disappointment. All right, whoops. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. Uh, uh, one second here. All right, another temple we'll visit is Komombo. Komombo is a uh, uh, built around 332 BC, about 30 miles north of Aswan, dedicated to the crocodile god Sobek and the falcon head god Horus. And you'll look at the two entrances of the temple, uh, one on the left, one on the right, one's for Sobek and one's for Horus. And what makes this really cool, this temple, is that, um, remember I said uh, uh, Sobek, the crocodile god, you'll find a lot of crocodile mummies uh, in this area. Karnak Temple, uh, if you remember, this is the largest temple. It covers about 250 acres, about 2000 years old. This is the largest of all the temples you'll visit. And of the walking tours that you do, this will probably uh, be the longest one at about uh, 
two hours long. And look at the massive columns and stuff. It's pretty spectacular. Um, all right, the last temple I'm gonna point out is the Temple of Hathor. Um, and the Temple of Hathor, um, what makes this kind of, this is actually considered the most best preserved temple out there. And uh, it consists of three temples, again, built around 2000 years ago. But what makes this kind of cool is that if you look in the foreground here, it kind of looks like a pool. Well, they were pools at one time. They're filled with gravel now, you can't swim in them. But the Egyptians were using swimming pools, you know, uh, four, 5,000 years ago, you know, way ahead of our time. I mean, we think about it's a, it's a you know, unique thing to maybe visit a swimming pool or something like that. Egyptians, again, um, swimming away. So this is not in the Hollywood Hills or anything like that, but they had their own pools. Um, and uh, the architecture here is a lot of Roman and Greek influence. So that's the Temple of Hathor and Dendera. All right, so we've been seven nights on the Nile. We're going to fly back up to Cairo. And if you remember, like, uh, how you... Um, Say you go to Europe or someplace and, uh, you know, you see these churches, plazas, wooden alley, na uh, narrow alleyways and stuff like that. And you see a lot of that uh, during your trip. And then maybe by the seventh or eighth day, you're, you're going to still say that's spectacular. But wouldn't it be nice to see something different? And this is kind of what we've done. We'll fly back to Cairo and we're going to visit the presidential palace. This palace was built back in 1873. And this was the home of the Egyptian president. And this is where dignitaries come uh, when they stay in Egypt. The palace itself, very exclusive, incredibly expensive to get in. Again, it's included. Um, and very few people get to see the palace. So it's just nice to change the scenery from all the temples and tombs that you've seen on the trip. And uh, there's little tiny museums in the, uh, in the palace, uh, like an old historic clock museum, museum that you know, shows the gifts that dignitaries have given, sort of an art museum. Uh, so we'll tour a portion of the palace because again, it's still a private residence. And we'll take it one step further and uh, we're gonna have lunch at the palace. And this will be a great lunch. We're gonna actually call it because it's the second to last day of farewell lunch. Um, and why do we wanna do lunch, like I have a special lunch at like a farewell lunch rather than a dinner? Um, it's simply because on the last day, flights back to North America I tend to leave very early in the morning, five, six, seven o'clock, some earlier, some later. Um, and we just feel like, we should leave the evening free because guests will want to, you know, sort of get ready for their long flight home, suitcase, kind of have a leisurely evening, maybe a light bite to eat and stuff. And then on the very last day, um, we'll take you back to the airport and, uh, and in time for to connect for your flight home. So we'll visit the palace. We'll have a beautiful farewell lunch. On the way back to the hotel, we'll visit old Cairo. You, again, you can see it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This was kind of sort of built up about the 10th century. Little thing of a thing about Cairo too. Think about it. Back in the 14th century, there were already half a million people living in the city. So that's your 12 nights and um, uh, uh, 12 days in Egypt. I'm just going to point out, Laurie had already done it. There are extensions before and after this trip. There's four nights in Jordan, which is two nights in Amman and uh, two nights near Petra. And again, here's a picture of the. Uh, um, uh, the treasury and a little fun fact about or fact about the Petra itself. Um, it was probably settled around, I don't know, maybe three or 4,000 BC, but it was abandoned in the second century. Why was it abandoned? Because they had built all these aqueducts from the mountains down into this area of uh, Petra. And, uh, but we had a drought, these conduits, they didn't have the water source. It ran out in the, I guess the second or third century. Then uh, there was earthquakes, trade routes changed and stuff like that and it was abandoned. It wasn't discovered again until the early 1800s by a Swiss uh, explorer. So that's Petra, made famous by Raiders of the Lost Ark Moon uh, movie. Uh, this is the hotel we're using, uh, the old village resort, which is owned by the locals. It's a four-star hotel. You've become used to the five-star hotels all along the way in our service. We're using the old village resort uh, mainly because it's owned by the locals. Um, and we thought it was a great way to support the uh, local community. Uh, yes, there's a Marriott and maybe a Moven pick in, in this area, but we decided to support the local community, use this four-star hotel. It's so local, you know, alcohol is kind of tabooed in the Middle East. This hotel doesn't even have a uh, liquor license yet, um, and it probably won't, but if you go to TripAdvisor, you'll find it as the number one property in uh, Petra. And uh, we're three nights in Dubai, which you can do uh, before. And, uh, you know, we'll visit the desert, we'll visit Abu Dhabi. Again, we'll do the city tour like that uh, Lori had pointed out. 
this is our hotel we'll be using, uh, Three Nights at the Marriott. And Lori had, did point out the Zaid Grand Mosque, a spectacular mosque uh, in Abu Dhabi. If you were there on a Thursday, but if you were there on a Friday, you'd be along there with 40,000 other worshipers. And finally, Israel, uh, four nights in Jerusalem. It's about a one hour flight from uh, Cairo to Tel Aviv. We'll visit Tel Aviv, but spend four nights in uh, Jerusalem at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And, you know, we touch on everything, you know, a little bit of everything, the tomb of Jesus, Bethlehem. We even do a day trip down to, um, uh, let's see, uh, down to the Dead Sea, which as you can see over there on the right-hand side and Masada which is a uh, ancient ruins here. And this is places where, you know, the elite used to uh, escape to. You can kind of see the little cable car on the left-hand side that takes you up to the top of Masada and the Dead Sea in the distance. And the Dead Sea, of course, is famous uh, for floating. That's not me, it's the saltiest sea, sea. So it's impossible to sink. So if you want to get in, no problem. We have lunch down there at a resort. You can get in the sea if you like. Um, so that's four nights in Jerusalem. Um, with a day trip out to Masada and the Dead Sea. And uh, after that, we'll take you back to Tel Aviv and you'll fly back to the city. I'm, I'm really conscious of our time and so on like that. So what I would like to turn this back to uh, Lori and- um, Thank you. Okay, and I'll stop my sharing of the screen right now. Fair enough? Okay. Well, thank you, Todd. That was wonderful. Great All presentation. Right. And yeah, we do have time for some questions. Um, I don't see any, let me take a look. Uh, see if we've got anything in here right now, no. So if you do have any questions, please let us know. Um, why am I not seeing that? Do you see anything, Todd? Uh, I don't see any questions, but Richard, yeah, okay. do, you, do you see any, Richard? Nope, no chats, nope. Uh, no chat notes at, at okay. this point. Well, anything that comes up while we finish, um, please just, uh, put your question right in there. And I am just gonna go over a few other um, important things that I'd like to share with you. Let me get my presentation going. There we go, looks good. Okay, so yeah. um, while we know this might not be the itinerary for everyone, I do have um, special group rates on a bunch of other um, Ama Waterways River Cruises uh, for one here in December 2021, Christmas on the Danube, which is um, a great time to visit Europe. As everyone knows, the Christmas markets are spectacular. This is one of my favorite rivers in Europe to cruise on. And um, early December, it'll be chilly and the glue vine and all the crafts. It's just a, a wonderful experience. So we have that. And again, any of these, I can send you more information about. Um, another special is we have the Colors of Provence. So down in the south of France, um, great for wine lovers, for foodies, for um, history. So there's a lot in that area. And that one is August. That's the first one coming up, August, 2021. So next summer. And then lastly, we have Riches of the Mekong, that's March of 2022. Um, again, another um, seven night cruise on the Mekong, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. I've spent a lot of time in this area, one of my favorite places in the world. So another great option for you with special pricing and amenities. Mm -hmm. Then just back to a little bit um, more of who I am and my company. Um, I'm with Dream Vacations and we are part of World Travel Holdings, which is one of the world's largest cruise agencies and leisure travel company. So what that would mean for you is that um, we own a lot of brands and we do a lot of um, business with a lot of different cruise companies, hotels and things like this. So these are some of the brands that we own and or do travel for. So the ones say, for example, up at the top are the brands that we own. And if you go down more towards the bottom, you'll see things like maybe Marriott Rewards or United Vacations, for example. We're the ones that provide the cruises for those companies. So the sheer volume of business that we do um, gives us a lot of amenities, incentives, and, and uh, promotions that we can share with our clients. And many times things that you can, more things than you can get direct. Um, Due to the coronavirus situation, everyone has seen how important it is to use a travel advisor. Um, there's always been good reasons, but that really showed how people were stuck overseas, how people were calling 
some of the online companies and never got an answer or they were on hold for seven hours. I kept my phone on probably for over a week um, all night long so that I was able to answer any, any types of emergencies that my clients had and make sure that I helped them out. Um, I do travel a lot so that when I talk to my clients, I really listen, I suggest, I adjust, I understand what they're looking for and let them know sometimes because many people say, well, my friend loved this and I want to do this. And after talking to them, I do know that, you know, that, that might be great for some people, but maybe not for you and really tailor the experience to what is going to work for you. So, um, some Facebook groups that we have that might be of interest to you is our uh, river cruising group, which is on the right there. And then my regular um, Facebook page. It'll keep you up to date about our webinars that we have and promotions, specials, everything to do with uh, travel and river cruising specifically. And then this is the website, virtualtravelbydv.com. It's part of my website where you can Go there and always see what's coming up next. You can uh, register for them in advance and just keep your eye on um, things that might be of interest to you. Like for example, this is just a, a page of, of a bunch that we've done and uh, little buttons where you can register. So I just wanted to thank you all for being here and thank you, Todd, and thank you, Richard, for uh, the amazing presentation that you've done. It's very exciting. And um, anything else that you wanted to add? I'll say one thing. And like Lori, I've been to a lot of different, just because of my job uh, and product development. So I've always had to travel for my life. And I, and like you, I've been to a lot. I don't know what it was, like 88 countries. And I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to say that, but that was my job. And I'm exhausted by saying it. But uh, the all I can tell you is of all those places I've been to, Egypt is in the top three. So it, it really is. It's something you think about it as a kid. We all saw the pyramids. We know the Sphinx and stuff. You've always imagined your life. To, you want to see things like this. And when you do see it, it is in, stays inside you for the rest of your life. So it is a once in a lifetime thing that I just honestly think everyone should see once in a life if they can get it. You know, that's my I, I do agree with you. And again, just look at the, the popularity of it so far. It yeah. just shows how many people do want to see it. I, I don't think you can talk to anyone who would say, well, I, I really have no interest in seeing the pyramids. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. But um, actually, we do have a question here about how many miles are covered on the Nile portion of the, um, the river cruise. Yeah, it's not like, uh, it's just a small portion, uh, a couple of hundred miles up and down. It's not 4,300 miles. So you go, uh, you travel for three days southbound and four days northbound. You cover the same tracks, but you visit different temples and stuff like that. It is a so, small portion. Okay, a lot to say. Um, okay, all right, I think we've, okay, Lord, we've gotten to the end. Richard? The only thing I would add is that if anybody is very interested, you know, certainly there's these groups that Lori's got um, going to, so look closer into those. But if anybody books within the next two weeks, we'll offer an additional $100 savings per person. I don't know that I even share that with you, Lori, but that is yeah. available to you also. So thank you so much. Right. And yeah, we didn't really even go into, uh, you know, many of the details of pricing, but um, with our special um rates we have there, you know, onboard credits, amenities. Um, if any of you are interested, I will be sending up a follow-up email to let you know where you can find some more information, but please reach out um, and we can get you a quote for your specific um, party, whether you're a solo traveler, a few people, uh, a group of friends, whatever it is, we can get the information for you and show you um, all the wonderful things that we have for you. Okay, well, thank you again, uh, Todd and Richard. I appreciate it. Thank you everyone for being here and uh, we will see you soon. All right, take care.